Well, with me now are Shalina Litt, a writer and a blogger who's also a child behaviour specialist. Um, I'm also joined by Sahar al Faifi, a community activist who's also a molecular gen geneticist. And Fatima Barkatullah is the director of the Seeds of Change Muslim Women's Conference, the largest of its kind in Europe. Also here are the writer and commentator Douglas Murray, Kola Hassan, who's a lecturer and advisor on Islam, and last but not least, the writer and broadcaster Yasmin Alibi Brown. Can I just begin with you, Fatima? Yes. 56% of British people don't really support the wearing of the full face veil in public. They don't want it. Uh, well, I think it depends on where you, where you take the poll, really, because, um, well, uh, something that I've recently launched is a project called Secrets of a Muslim Woman, and it's all about letting people know uh, why we do what we do, because I think a lot of it is to do with not really being familiar with it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, my message to the British public is that you've got nothing to fear. You know, this but is a they piece don't of feel that though, do they? Because <coughs> elsewhere in this po poll, a majority said they don't know how to relate you know, to you know a woman why? wearing a full face veil. I think you know the people who have actually interacted with women who wear the face veil, people who work with them. I mean, we're in East London today. In East London, the veil is practically you know normal on the streets of, of East London. Uh, people who've actually interacted and worked with women who wear the veil have absolutely no problem with it. Douglas I think Murray, it's a fear of the unknown. Douglas Murray, would you like to see the, the veil ban? Here? Well, I think like a majority of British people, I think that it should be banned in public places, particularly places like courtrooms, where it's absolutely imperative that a jury are able to ban? see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, uh, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. to impose a ban, but in principle you'd like to see one because you think in Britain in, it's unacceptable. In public buildings, in courts, in schools and places like this, absolutely, I think a ban would be very sensible. In streets and so on, I think it's difficult, but it should be societally discouraged. Fatima? No, a ban, I mean, I think it's a complete overreaction. Look, the niqab has been part of the British landscape for the last 20 odd years, okay? Muslim women have been going about their business. We've got a radio presenter here, we've got a scientist, we've got talented Muslim women who've got a lot to give to this society, who've been doing so and been very sensible about it. It's... When we need to remove our face veils, we do it. But how do you think we get through airport Sahara, security? I mean, what, what about the fact that 56% of people are saying they don't want it here? You know what, I'm not surprised at all because when you know that high profile politicians making such uh, uh, the, the offensive comment, comments and big fuss about it. But I am Douglas not surprised when right. the public say British they are society, against it. We show our faces. Exactly. The British society, the fabric of the British society is respecting the public freedom. We are and British. public freedom it's... is part of it. The religious what freedom. What about so the fact the right that people to feel practice. uneasy? They said they don't know how to relate to women who have their faces covered. First of all, let them interact with us. Let us be open and engaging with them. This is number one. Secondly, 80% of communication in the world does not involve face-to-face. -face, what? Uh, of, uh, Twitter, what? Facebook, uh, yes, Brown. Twitter I mean, Facebook, what? phones Excuse doesn't involve face-to-face -face uh, communication. Uh, the issue is the problemization here. It's not existent problem. I'm sorry. All. I worked in this area for seven years, about 15 years ago, and this was not, as you said, a norm. This has been imported and exported for reasons which I, we haven't got time to go into. We live in a society, in this society, and we live in a country which is very, very complicated. And to shut yourself off as if the rest of us are infections oh, and cutting... No, no, no. How because are we do not this, sure. is the, we are the, this is the meaning. We are engaged. Uh, please, Shalina, we are Shalina, how are we shut off? Shalina, you have said that in engaging with your elderly white neighbour who feels uneasy, sometimes you remove the veil. When you worked with children, you yeah. removed, removed the yeah, veil. Isn't, isn't that an acknowledgement yeah. that it is difficult for people to engage with, with women who have their faces covered? Yeah, I think it is. And I also honour what Douglas Murray has just said. Mm. He couldn't actually feel comfortable and... You know, I'm making a presumption here, but you couldn't say, let's do an outright ban. And that's great, because I, I understand you look at social cohesion. It's about looking at, let's isolate it. Whose discomfort are we going to favour? Because if I lift my veil, I'm then uncomfortable. 
and we've favoured someone's discomfort. We live in a society, and but I don't believe in the French ban. I don't. I don't think you should do that. But why but not? Absolutely. If, if you're opposed to it, no, if you I think, think there, there is... is a very simple way of saying, and a non-racist way of saying, in public institutions, everybody, whoever they are, must show their faces. It's Muslim exceptionalism that is becoming the problem. No, it's if not. If we have the same rule for everybody, and at home, on the streets, I don't want people stopped. Wait. Okay. We accommodate religious expression in this country. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses who don't want uh, blood transfusions, uh, Sikh people who want to wear turbans. We, we make exceptions, you know, in, in certain situations. And so, look, you know, I really want to reach out to the public and say, you've got nothing to fear from us. But take We're up British. Yasmin's I was born in this country. I love point. this country. Take up Yasmin's point. But this is about exceptionalism. That, 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 take up Yasmin Alibi Brown's point about this is about exceptionalism. It, 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 we, we, not, make, com, we accommodate, don't we, in this country, and in my country, Britain, we accommodate uh, religious expression. We do make exceptions yes. for people. And there's nothing, and that's what I no, thought. And we cannot destroy up in this country, the minorities but, and the religious belief a... in the name of equality. But we what have... if the majority feel uncomfortable? feel uneasy and say they don't want to. I think then the onus is on us as well, isn't it? I mean, to, to actually reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this is just going one step towards that, to say to people, look, you know, we're human beings just like but, you. But if I, I may, know, if I have if I may very quickly, to hold that the, the religious freedom is an extremely important thing. And I think most people who would agree, I hope in this yep. room, that Britain is the most tolerant place in the world to live, including as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but let's just add one thing to this, if I may. The issue of social interaction is very important, and not just to me, but obviously to a majority of the British people. Yeah. What I say tonight, what Yasmin says and other people say tonight, people see our faces, they know who said it. I'm sorry to say this, but nobody knows who you are. They can hear your name, they can't see you. That's if enough. I say something stupid on television tonight, people know it's me saying it. If you do, with all due respect, you can disappear and no meaning? one knows. No, we're not disappearing. You what can does this say? Here. Come the on. meaning of this thing is extremely important to, to address. The meaning of this thing is women are by nature dangerous to no, men and society. No, no, Therefore, no. they must be covered, they must be buried. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I cannot accept. I mean, Fatima, come back on exactly that point, because we have spoken to women who say that they cover their faces because they don't want to incite uh, passions among men. I mean, that is essentially Yasmin's point. Well, look, essentially, uh, I think, you know, that's Yasmin's opinion. No, it's not but my opinion. Yes, that it is. What it is, is your opinion? opinion. Yeah. Ask the Taliban. Ask Taliban. No. Why they're <laughs> 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 no, 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 Taliban here. Yasmin, Yasmin, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Maybe you haven't really met women in the car, but I would like to invite you out to my house. You know, you can see my face. We can sit together. <laughs> we can have a laugh. Yes, but and then I, I think Douglas it will change your, come, your opinion. Come to your house and see your face, though, could he? Um, I can assure you, I'm not going to be around. He could meet my husband. He, he, no, <laughs> no, you're you welcome. Be. You would be welcome to, you know, come can to my I, house. Hasan, Hasan, yeah. Can I you ask? Can I mean, him. you used to wear yes, the niqab and then yep. changed yep. your mind. Why? Um, two main reasons. One was theological. I made some attempt to actually study the whole uh, notion of niqab in Islam, and I found that it's not actually mandatory. The hijab, the headscarf, is mandatory, but the niqab is not. It's part of um, Islamic society right from the beginning. But it's not mandatory. Just go and read a little bit of Ibn, Th Ibn Kathir, for example. Yeah, I'm, I'm a scholar Shekhar in Bani's, training, actually, um, so I, I do second, know that. Sorry, and finish. secondly, we have a social function in society. Mm. We are here to interact with society. We have to have a social consciousness. We have to benefit society. We have to interact with society. I realized in those three years I was a nobody. Nobody wanted to talk to me because they couldn't talk to me. I could smile until the cows come home, but nobody could see me smiling. You see, that's a very good point, isn't it? Because you say you were a nobody, yes. and yet many, many people in our poll disagreed with this notion that it was empowering in any way. And I bet you there were many Muslims in that survey. Most Muslims don't Yes, care I for this agree either. With that. So, yeah. so to say British as if it was, you know, non-Muslims, most of us, but most of us daren't speak out. When I do, I get death threats. I've had emails just this well, I, week I am from sorry. Mikabi, I am sorry. from Mikabi, he's calling me a prostitute. What is this freedom that we have? No we, we can't even criticise what is not acceptable, you actually. Are free to criticise no, no, I mean, what do you make of that, 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 that pay, making, a, as a, in a free democracy, making her views known and getting that sort that's of... That's fine. Well, that's fine. About it. I, I think that's the, the issue that we... But about the response that she gets. Well, that's, oh, that's wrong, terrible. obviously. That's it's terrible. terrible. It's no, we, absolutely we, we terrible. It's that. not acceptable. That's not, 
we, we should be able to discuss it. We should be able to talk about it. And I acknowledge that people no, feel uncomfortable. No, I think one of the problems is that the minute religion comes into it, what happens with the people who do wear the niqab often feel they are religiously superior and more pious no. than people. No, nobody has said that today. Nobody has said that today. Let me just move it out to the audience, if you would. Sophia, I'm right in saying you also used to wear the niqab, and you again decided not to. Yes. Why was that? The reason for that was that I mean, that was a personal choice. I had an incident where a niqab was pulled off me and I, it really frightened me and I became very very anxious but I feel very strongly about some of the things that has been said here one of the things that you've been for example Yasmin you've said about you know freedom of speech and how people are threatening you I think that's completely unacceptable Islamically uh, you know we can't be responsible uh, for all the Muslims and for all the people around the world exactly. but I will say that just like you have the freedom of choice to express how you feel we have the freedom of choice I have a freedom of choice to not wear a niqab but and there she has a freedom of choice but did you to feel wear a niqab that you were forced out of wearing it, or did one you come to a did, different view about yeah, it? Yeah, one of the things I, I... It was a very personal choice for me. It meant a lot to me it's to not, wear the niqab. This is not shopping in Primark. This has a <laughs> meaning, and it's the meaning I'm arguing about. You know, and actually, but, I, but that's your perception. Let me explain to you the meaning, then. Obviously. That's your argument, that but these that's women your, don't but that's, know what their no, own but Yasmin, choice that's is. your no, perception. They fundamentally no, absolutely do know, which is why I'm objecting to it. Jasmine, but that's your perception. You're, you think that no, this is how you're going to have... My perception... very specific, if you would. You are a psychotherapist. Yes, I'm a psychotherapist. But you deal with women who are forced into wearing... The I, I, no, I, I, I have, and I, another thing I would mention to other, uh, you know, uh, regarding communication, in the nine years of counselling uh, with Sakina Muslim Counselling that I, I do, all of my clients, majority of them are all phone, we do phone counselling. And, and a lot of good work is done. I don't see their face, they don't see my face. So it's not really about looking at someone and really connecting with that person, because we don't connect with the outer, we connect with the inner. So you think and the loneliness that you talked about <laughs> seeing <laughs> you and, and not a single person, not a single woman has said to me, my husband has forced me to wear a niqab. What the issues they do have is regards to niqab, I am fearful to go out, I'm at home, I'm lonely, I'm depressed. I, I don't even want to go out because I feel like I'm not accepted. And the other thing I really want to express is that where is the humanity? You know, at the end of the day, you know, as a woman, as a, as a person, as a human being, where's my right to be who I am? This Ma is my identity. You have that right. That you have that right and you exercise it um, and so are all of the other ladies in this room. But the question is whether or not, and I, I would ask this of, of I think of everyone in the room who's covered, do you think that by covering your face from everyone else in society, you are exacerbating difference or, or, or making it less bad? Marian, would, would you any of you at least point? recognize you, that you are, are you exacerbating, exacerbating a difference? Is okay, this divisive? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to look at human rights, okay? In 1998, there was the Human Rights uh, Convention, OK? Under Article 9, it specifically says, we all have the freedom of expression, we have the freedom of belief, we have the freedom of so many things that, you know, like in this country, but I thought great... Marian, like, on Douglas just, Murray's I... point, sorry, on Douglas Murray's point, that this is, you know, is, do you understand that many people feel this is divisive? It is a curtain between well, you and the rest of society. Well, to be quite frank, society. I think people are free to feel how they want. It doesn't, I don't but care just, how you I feel. It's really, no, 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 wait. Really and truly, <laughs> it's about my human rights. My human right, I am allowed to cover. You um, don't have to just agree. Just very briefly on Could the I... point that, that many people in the survey said that they feel unease, they feel uncomfortable, they well, feel anxious. Well, to be anxious. quite frank, I feel like that towards emos, but well, that's can I, can all right. I just point out <laughs> that, can I just right? point out, there is something fundamentally ludicrous about somebody dressed as you are talking the language of modern human rights. Absolutely. What's a bit fundamentally oh, ludicrous. That's, that's in your mind. That's what? in your Absolutely. mind. Okay. Okay. Kola Hassan. This, this lady is constantly talking about rights. As a Muslim, you should know that responsibility is in there duty. as well. You have a responsibility to society around you. Exactly. Muslims, I hate it I'm, 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 a, just I'm a community organiser. I'm a scientist. I am engaged with the community. I mean, so I'm not that isolated. That you have a responsibility. I have, I don't Sorry, one isolated. second. You have a responsibility Sorry. in wider society. Well, obviously, obviously speaking, as a Muslim woman right now, you know, all this talk about there being no, uh, uh, there being a fear of us, well, fear stems from ignorance. For them to be fearful, they need to understand us and we need to understand them. Obviously, as British citizens, we do understand them. We were raised in British, school, British schools. We were uh, 
some of us go to university here, we work here, we understand the British culture, but do you really understand the Islamic culture? Pardon me, you that's not the role. You can't possibly understand the British culture because there's been hundreds of years and my mother's generation, because I too am a Muslim, my mother's generation, they were beaten, bullied and burnt because they wanted to get rid of all of this and be seen as proper equals. You're betraying that history. And this country fought for hu Woman women's rights. Everywhere. And you've now I'm taken sorry. us back to the I'm dark sorry. ages. I'm sorry, but can I just um, take it from Shabita? Um, you are a doctor within the NHS. One second, please. You are a doctor within the... Excuse me, can we all listen to each other? Um, you're a doctor in the NHS. Yes, I am. And obviously that is one of the very public places where a ban, you know, if it were to be considered, that yeah. well, is First where of it would all, I would like to say that calling for a ban uh, on niqab in NHS is um, actually uh, talking about an issue that does not really exist. Because uh, me and my friends, a lot of, uh, have been contacting a lot of doctors all across the four countries of the United Kingdom, and none of them have ever come across a doctor who actually observed the face whale within NHS or even a nurse. Exactly. So, uh, um, I, I don't really see uh, uh, that why an issue that does not really exist is actually being addressed. Mm -hmm. There is no one or no doctor or a nurse who actually wears the niqab in NHS, just very, even very myself. That point, because though, isn't that an acknowledgement that there is a difficulty for many people that patients no, would find No, it's not actually like that because I am not given a choice to wear it within NHS. When um, it's, I know it as a fact that if I wear my face whale and go for, to a job interview, I will never be taken up for a job. How is it, how is it to ask, you, you all here, how is it that you say it's an absolutely fundamental, you have to wear it, it's a right, it's a necessity upon you, but yet you say you go through an airport and it doesn't matter if you lift it. Is it so negotiable? In France, many of the women who said we, will, we cannot go out if we don't wear it have taken it off. Can I, can I yep. just say, Selena. That, you know, there is a place where we have the right to exercise our right. And if this was a school or a playground, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the bullies are winning here. There is a majority of people who have the um, power and resources to put out there an image about the niqab. I teach in schools and I said to a young bunch of group of, of children, I said to them, if somebody came into your school, a boy, and he had nail varnish on and he had high heels on, you know, and you've seen him getting bullied, would you defend his right to be the way he was? Or would you ask him to change the way that he's dressed? Now, this is what I'm saying is, I said that I respected the fact that in context, you said in a courtroom, in the classroom, or in, the, in public settings mm. where there are people Shall who have got very... mixed opinions, that we should have policies and procedures to... that control these things. But being in Britain, Sh I'm proud Shalina, to be British. Just very br briefly, can I ask you, Saha? That means I can many do, of the women, as much as I want to, many of the women who came forward to talk to us today, yeah. are very young. And actually, one of the questions that I think a lot of people ask is, you know, we've looked at Afghanistan and we've heard stories of women who have burnt the face veil and are terrified of the prospect of having to wear it again. Yeah. And they just don't understand how young women in Britain want to wear it here. Very briefly, if you can. Well, I started wearing the niqab at a young age, and the reason is, is after a research, it's a sp long spiritual journey, I found out that when I wear the niqab, I'll be closer to God, I'll be, uh, uh, I'll be is an act of worship, is an mm. act of modesty, and is liberating and dignifying. And since then, I've never changed my mind. And although, although my parents, uh, my, my mom, my sister, don't wear it. It's but, me. It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course. just about you exercising of your course. choice. The way That's other fine. people feel about that should be of some concern to but you. But you know, these the feelings are coming from naked. negative prejudices. We, we have coming from You don't want men's opinions? No. No. You don't want men's opinions? No. I'm sorry. Okay, we are going to have to end it there. No, I'm really sorry. I the only man I'm Everybody, sorry you don't want to hear men's opinions. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm afraid that is all we've got time for, though. Many more people wanted to speak. You can see all the reports that we've done this week on Channel 4 News on Britain's Nick Hub on our website. But back to you, John. Jackie, thank you.